Yeah, I think one person has been removed, uh, but hopefully she'll join back. Okay, glad to know that uh, Charles is doing better. That's good. Okay, yep. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, let's, uh, let's just continue where we stop. We have been learning about the importance of uh, a kingdom builder's lifestyle. So while we said that uh, it is important for us to focus on the God-given vision that um, has been entrusted to us, it's also equally important or rather more important for us to have a lifestyle and a character which will sustain us as we serve God. So uh, that's what we've been discussing about. We looked at some um, lives lives of people in the word of God and how they had a character and that's what helped them through uh, in different situations, particularly in adverse situations. So uh, today we'll continue from there. We, uh, we said that, you know, character, strong moral character is important. Uh, and we talked about the example of Joseph, the example of Daniel, uh, and um, the fact that uh, such a character is developed early on in uh, one's life as you observe in uh, Daniel and that's because of the choices that's because of uh, yielding to uh, God's leading in his life so Daniel was very yielding uh, to God's ways so from an early age he had developed uh, convictions and he stood by those convictions no matter what so uh, these can be developed character can be developed early on in in our lives um, a character is influenced by the kind of company we keep or the friends of uh, an individual shape one's character too uh, and we see this in daniel's life where you know he had good friends and uh, they too were men of conviction so together you know they uh, uh, stood for what was right uh, even in a land where uh, people were following you know other systems so influence and company that makes a big difference then a strong moral character is also built through discipline and practice um, so we observe in the life of daniel that he had disciplined himself to engage in prayer uh, for you know three times a day so that was something he couldn't um, disconnect from the person that he was so that's just one example but discipline in various uh, areas of our lives we can develop that uh, as well and it really strengthens our character then through difficult circumstances uh, and especially you know when we go through difficult circumstances uh, you know there's a kind of refining that goes on within us uh, and adversity only strengthens our character further so there is a passage that is given here romans 5 verses 3 and 4 it says and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope so as we persevere through those difficult times we will see that our character is developed and you know we we said that character is important because um it's like the wine skin you know that holds uh, the anointing of god which god is pouring upon us and if the wine skin breaks the wine will leak out so if the character is weak and uh, uh, you know there is some sort of a failure a moral failure uh, even the anointing you know that you we can have the anointing but it will not um, how do I put it? Like, uh, though uh, the anointing can bless, you know, the the ministry of that individual, right? It it cannot be trusted anymore. So that that's what happens when the uh, wine skin gives way. Um, the uh, uh, gifting that God has given us, it can take us places where only character can keep us, and so we must focus on uh, one's character. And it is one's character which will give the person the strength to withstand um, the you know the challenges that that we face uh, it could be temptations it could be persecution it could be you know some kind of an accusation uh, that is coming our way or uh, whatever it is it is that inner strength 
that will sustain us through all these onslaughts okay and uh, the character is what shapes the message that we will uh, ever the greatest message that we will ever preach so you know um, there is a quote uh, and let me just yeah it's there uh, in our notes and i'm going through our notes i'm on page 52 right now the top of that uh, page has this quote by edwin louis cole and he says the man is more than the message your message is credible because you are credible when a man is no longer credible his message is suspect so the people who we are is very important otherwise uh, one cannot trust the word which we bring so the word can be the word can be credible i could be sharing the truth uh, of god's word with you but if you don't trust me then even if i present the truth it will be hard for you to trust so which is why uh, the man is more important than the message or you know the woman is more important than the message which she brings uh, and we must focus on strengthening our character and character obviously uh, is also uh, something that uh, will determine our durability uh you know it is said that fame comes uh, fame can come in a moment but true greatness comes through longevity and the longevity obviously uh, is is um something that something that one can have because of character okay or that strength that sustained strength constant strength over a period of time so that's about character and you know we can't uh, emphasize it too much it's that important uh, no matter how much time we spend on character now we'll discuss a little bit about spiritual maturity kingdom builders uh, we must mature in the lord and have a mature example so what is spiritual maturity um you know what does the bible have to say about spiritual maturity it's it's kind of hard you know um if you if, if we want to assess an individual for being mature what would be the parameters now the word of god does have quite a bit to tell us about spiritual maturity so from scripture we'll understand how this assessment can be made the reason why we are learning about this is because every kingdom builder must invest in growing in god and maturing in god so there are a couple of greek words um that describe maturity um and those are one is telios so you see that uh, in the new testament and telios means full of age or or of full age like an adult so telios is uh, somebody who is grown up or uh, an adult or you could use the term perfect man so telios is is used in scripture plero plero is uh, a word which means being filled up so you know when when something is full when a bottle is full you know, that's sort of complete uh, you look at it as complete and uh, you know it, it's kind of taken over by by that water the same way plero is when we are full of whatever needs to be done within us it's done okay so that's plero then uh, katar katar this uh, which means to be thoroughly equipped so these are all terms that are describing spiritual maturity in an individual now looking at scriptures we we'll see what characteristics or here more specifically seven characteristics uh, that describe spiritual maturity so the first one is that one uh, spiritual maturity has to do with christ likeness so when we say that i want to mature in god or you know so and so is maturing in god what what are we indicating we say hey this person is becoming more and more like jesus hey, look at their humility or look at their um, you know look at their kindness or look at their excellence we could uh, look at various characteristics and understand that they have grown you know more into becoming more like jesus and that is why you know, we are calling them 
uh, spiritually mature. So spiritual maturity is about growing into Christ likeness. And uh, Jesus himself said, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. And Jesus was also pointing out uh, to the importance of becoming like God in our character. Now, even if we consider all of uh, Christian ministry, okay, uh, the Word of God teaches us that ministry is done so that people can become a perfect man or become full of full age or become, if you want to use the term adults in the kingdom of God. So whatever ministry we do, in fact, uh, Ephesians 4 verse 13, where the previous scriptures talk about God giving gifts to the church uh, in the form of the fivefold ministry offices. What is the responsibility of these ministry offices? It is to equip the body of Christ, equip the people of God so that the people of God can become of full age. So Ephesians 4 13, it says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Perfect there is again, Tilios. So, why has God entrusted the church with the fivefold ministry offices? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. So that every individual in the body is perfected. Or in other words, every individual in the body grows up or matures into what? Into Christ likeness. So Christ likeness is an indicator of spiritual maturity. We are becoming more and more like Christ in all areas of our life so uh, that you know is is something that we must aim at so in spiritual maturity the first thing is to become more like christ then spiritual maturity is to be uh, perfect in the will of god so obviously all of us are living our lives to fulfill god's purpose for us as individuals and colossians 4 12 no? Uh, we read there the ministry of Epaphras, which was the ministry of intercession, prayer and intercession. One of the reasons why he engaged in that ministry is so that the believer can become complete in all the will of God or the term pleuro is used there. Pleuro is filled up. So we are filled up completely to follow the will of God. So. Maturity. What is spiritual maturity? We are aligning ourselves more and more to the will of God. Okay. So one is Christ likeness. Second is we are aligning ourselves to the will of God. How how much are we aligned? You know, thirty percent, forty percent. But here uh, we we see in the scripture completely, completely, complete in all the will of God. So as we are growing into the will of God in all areas of our life, uh, that also indicates spiritual maturity. So it's a progressive surrender. We are continually giving ourselves over to the will of God. The third one, okay, but spiritual maturity is being thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, we know Ephesians 2 tells us that we've all been called to good works. Okay. And God has called each one of us according to his purpose into different good works. Now for each of these good works, we have to be thoroughly equipped. And becoming thoroughly equipped is also an indicator of spiritual maturity. So, uh, you know, that is something that we must all aim towards. And that is something that also honors God. Okay. Now, as we look at uh, you know, somebody who is uh, serving God well, um, serving God, you know, after having trained themselves. Uh, let's take, for example, just God's word. Okay. So there can be a certain topic and different people can teach on it. But then uh, when we listen, 
to somebody who has been in the word for years, somebody who has applied that word, uh, somebody who has taught that word, we can see the difference, isn't it? Because they can bring uh, the uh, necessary, uh, you know, necessary input or you know things that need to be imparted into the life of the listener, so the listener is edified. So uh, that can only happen when one is thoroughly equipped. And it happens again over time. So whatever ministry God has called us to, we need to grow in it. We have to become thoroughly equipped in it. And Jesus also used this statement. And he said, a disciple is not above his teacher. Meaning, um, you know, the teacher is always, you know, someone who has imparted into our lives and we look up to the teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So our goal should be to be at least like our teacher. Okay, and uh, our teacher is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to be like him, fully equipped. How can we be like him? Perfectly trained. Everyone who is perfectly trained. So we are being equipped to come to that level of serving and ministering, um, you know, uh, like like Christ. So this is in Luke chapter 6 and verse 40. So anyone who is thoroughly equipped okay, uh, also is um, um, reflecting spiritual maturity. Now let's move on. Spiritual maturity is having ability to receive solid meat. So when the writer of the Hebrews, uh, he, he writes to the, um, the church, now he says that after God has imparted, after the truth has been taught to the people, they were still in a state where they had not digested the basics of God's word. Okay, So which means probably they did not believe it completely. They did not understand it fully. They did not apply it in their lives. And they were in a condition where somebody had to come and somebody had to teach them all over again. So he is rebuking them in Hebrews 5. He's rebuking them and uh, the passage uh, from verses 11 to 14. And he says that, you know, uh, of, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. So he's saying their capacity to understand, their capacity to digest God's word is still very minimal. They have not developed their capacity. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe, but Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know, it's like saying basically what uh, the people are being told is, see, after having been in school for, you know, 12 years, you should be in the 12th grade. Now, if you still want someone to come and equip you with the second grade lessons, something is wrong because the capacity to understand the capacity to receive spiritual truth the capacity to um, receive kingdom revelation the deeper truths of god's word which the writer is terming as solid food okay uh, we say secrets of the kingdom how do we go deeper in the things of the kingdom in the understanding of god's word as we are maturing now, if we are not ready to receive and apply the very basics, then how is it that one can, you know, uh, go to a place where God starts giving them deeper revelation? So solid meat has to do with the deeper things of the kingdom. It has to do with, uh, you know, moving on from some of the basics, you know, what are some of the basics in the book of Hebrews? Those things are also uh, kind of listed out the, uh, the truth about salvation, that now we have been saved. 
uh, you know about baptisms uh, that we have repented and our we have turned our lives uh, back to god so some of these basics yes it's not that we must uh, downgrade it in any way but the idea is to receive all of this to assimilate it and then keep moving higher keep moving deeper right keep expanding in the kingdom of god and when it comes to dealing with the word of god greater wisdom greater knowledge greater understanding keep okay, more mysteries of the kingdom of god and god wants us to keep going deeper right not be stuck in the very uh, initial things that we started out with so that is an indicator of spiritual maturity then spiritual maturity is also having our senses trained to discern right from wrong so hebrews 5:14 you know, that again that scripture says that uh, one is able to by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so basically this says that a believer who over time right um has tempered themselves with the word of god you know ever so often and they have let the word of god work in them every time uh, such that you know they have made choices decisions based on god's word over a period of time what happens you know it just it is it is just kind of getting inbuilt into their system and the senses are so well trained that we can discern immediately oh yeah this is not this is not from god or this is from god or this is the right path this is not the right path uh, this is evil this is good so how is it that you know one is able to discern we can look at a mature individual and we can ask the question also hey how is it that you are able to tell so quickly you know what is right what is wrong but it hasn't come overnight over a period of time just um, you know exposing themselves to the word of god uh, making choices on the basis of that you know allowing the the word to shape the soul the mind the will the emotions right uh, one has come to a place where they are able to discern this is right this is wrong but you know anyone who is a child you know, like even in the natural when we look at a, uh, a, a let's say a 3 year old or a 4 year old they they are okay to to lie or to to uh, steal something that belongs to their friend they don't understand what is right what is wrong because they haven't been taught they haven't trained themselves to do what is right but over a period of time as they are taught that child will be groomed into a mature individual who knows what what is it that i should do what is it that i should not do so uh, it it comes by training our senses to discern both good and evil and that's a sign of spiritual maturity spiritual maturity is also to put away childish behavior okay and you know that's totally under, uh, understood now no parent would desire for the children to remain um, childish they would you know be happy when the children are young and uh, uh, just enjoy that phase of their life but if the child continues to throw a tantrum you know if, uh, into their teenage years or if the child continues to um, uh, not take responsibility for anything like you know if you have to feed the child even when the child is in going to college there something is wrong there it's childish behavior you would expect the uh, child to develop and grow over a period of time begin to take responsibility you know have a better understanding uh, have become more selfless right so these are all these are all indicators that the child is developing in a healthy way now if one remains in those same uh, you know infant like attitudes it's stunted growth okay and it's childish behavior so uh, you know a lot of parents even they grown uh, grown up like teenage children they tell them don't be childish don't be childish grow up so in the same manner when it comes to the kingdom of god now what is childish in the kingdom of god in the kingdom of god you know behavior such as 
we we want to compete we have selfish ambition so we are jealous okay if somebody uh, we see somebody with the same gift we are jealous hey are they going to outshine us you know these are all it's all stemming from the flesh and we've not dealt with these things and it comes out as childish behavior you know where we are trying to kind of sabotage things or we are trying to cause division right we are trying to throw a tantrum get attention so all these things happen and it's unfortunate you know believers uh, could be in the lord for many years but yet growth has not happened maturity has not happened right um, so childish behavior within the body looks somewhat like this okay and there can be many other expressions of such childish behavior uh, okay but just a, a couple of things for us to understand that spiritual maturity has to do with self control this is the seventh point here it has to do with self control so anyone who is uh, mature okay, we would uh, look at them and appreciate how well they are able to manage things because they have subject themselves right to to discipline they are able to self regulate themselves uh, uh, and this this discipline uh, in fact the scripture says that this discipline has to do with being able to take care of oneself right uh, oneself and especially you know the words that one speaks so i'll read that passage for us it is in james chapter 3 and verse 2 it says for we all stumble in many things if anyone does not stumble in word he is perfect or the term there is tilios or that person is a mature person he is a perfect man able also to bridle the whole body so there is a control of the tongue or you know what the person commits to because our words are uh, we are committing to something every time we say yeah this i'll do this i'll do that so we are committing to something so that person who is able to speak the the right words think and speak the right words able to control one's tongue uh, scriptures say that that person is mature and that person is also able to control the entire body or in other words basically the ability to self govern oneself okay um, uh, that is what a mature person has so self control in other words a mature person would have self control okay uh, and there is a, another a beautiful scripture from proverbs 16 verse 32 it says he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city so that ruling over one spirit or self control being able to regulate oneself whether it is emotionally whether it is you know uh, temperament whether it is uh, the decision making and once again you know these are all things that we can grow into we can learn we can develop over a period of time so the next important thing now we have discussed several indicators uh, of spiritual maturity Uh, but also we need to realize that this is not something that will happen immediately it is a process growth is always a process it takes time it takes uh, determination on the part of the individual who wants to grow so uh, spiritual maturity is also going to take time so that's a little bit about spiritual maturity um yes all right Uh, so what i'm going to do is i will um, touch on kingdom stewardship quickly and then maybe towards the end we can take questions or have some discussion about spiritual maturity as well as stewardship so if you have any uh, questions please jot it down we'll come back to it okay kingdom stewardship so in the lifestyle of a uh a kingdom builder he said character is important he said maturity is important the third one a uh, third aspect that we are looking at is stewardship okay all right so in the word of god uh, the believers are called as stewards okay, we are called as stewards and stewards are people who are entrusted with the responsibility we are stewards of the 
mysteries of God. I'm not reading through the scriptures here. I'm on page uh, uh, 56. So you can have a look if you want to. So we're stewards of the mysteries of God. We're stewards of the grace that God gives us. Okay. And, you know, we are in general stewards of God. So he puts us in charge. He makes us responsible for different things in our lives. So we will try to understand what stewardship means and how steward, good stewardship should be. Okay. So stewardship should be a way of life. Stewardship uh, is seen in the way we live and conduct ourselves. And a steward uh, simply means to be a manager. So one who manages things or one who manages himself, the responsibilities that have been given to him or her. So what kind of a manager should one be in the kingdom of God? Or you know, a steward or an overseer, caretaker. Uh, okay, the steward should function properly. So let's just say that a particular ministry has been given to us. Okay. And we need to manage that ministry. How should it be done? One is God expects that things function properly. Okay. Secondly, that things be made profitable. Now, where are we getting all this understanding? We're getting this understanding from scripture. It's just that, you know, I'm not quoting a verse um, chapter and verse uh, for us here, but uh, you know, I'm sure you will be able to relate it to you know, some parable that Jesus said or you know, uh, scripture uh, that's given. Uh, so to function properly, to do things in the right way. Remember we said one should know how to conduct himself in the house of God, how to do things in the house of God and then be profitable. So when Jesus gave, uh, Jesus talked about the man who gave talents what was the expectation of the owner? He wanted profit. He wanted that to be multiplied. In the same way, God is looking for that work to uh, thrive and flourish. So a steward uh, is responsible to bring profit. Okay, uh, That is the second thing. Then the steward is somebody who must be accountable. Now, even in the parables we see, once something is entrusted, the master comes back and asks, okay, what did you do? How did you do it? So the, the person who has the responsibility has to give an account and say, yes, I received one talent. This is what I did with it. Or I received five talents. This is what I did with it. So, you know, God holds us accountable and a good steward is always accountable. You know, the good steward is not like, okay, you gave me, fine, you know, I'm doing whatever I want to. How can you even ask me? Why should you ask me? I, I am not uh, going to give you an answer. A good steward doesn't do that, but a good steward is accountable. Then a good steward is re responsible to protect and safeguard what has been entrusted to that person. Okay? Uh, and that's under understood. We shouldn't lose what has been given to us. Instead, take care of it. And then ensure continuity. Meaning, uh, if it's like a let's say a ministry responsibility uh, or a church, maybe you you planted a church. So God is looking for longevity of that work. So once we know that you know our time is going to be up, we have to ensure that we put somebody in place who will take the work forward. You know, for the next several years. So these are all characteristics of a good steward, somebody who runs things well, somebody who brings a profit, somebody who's accountable, somebody who protects and safeguards what has been entrusted to him or her, somebody who ensures continuity. So that makes for a good steward. So um, we must be good stewards in whatever God has called us to do. Okay. Now, just talking a little bit more about uh, all these aspects in the functioning of uh, whatever God has entrusted to us, you know, we must make sure, uh, Paul made this statement. He said that we give no offense in anything. So how did he do the ministry? He did it so well that he did not want his ministry to be blamed in any way. Okay, 
So nobody should be able to point a finger at us and say, hey, look, you, know, you said this or you did that. So proper functioning, proper functioning. And that, that is what, uh, uh, that is how he did the ministry. Then a good steward being profitable, we know that Jesus said uh, that, you know, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So bearing of much fruit is important to the father. And us being accountable, yeah, we'll discuss that. Yes. Uh, a good steward is faithful and wise. Okay? Uh, so somebody who will hold on to what has been given to them. Now, uh, Paul, when he writes to Timothy and he tells Timothy, you appoint leaders. Okay, You find people in the church who can serve alongside you and they can be uh, you know, the pillars of the church. Uh, he tells him, you find faithful men. Faithful men and women. So for a steward, it is very important to be faithful. And he who is, in he who is faithful with little, oh, Jesus said that, much more will be given to that person. So we need somebody who is faithful as a steward. So faithfulness, what does faithfulness entail? Basically, it entails sincerity. It entails dependability. Know, and be trustworthy. Imagine you give somebody some responsibility and then you expect that person to kind of do that. But if that person doesn't do it, uh, it's problematic. So what ends up happening? Uh, we entrusted that person with the responsibility, but the second time we are scared, oh no, if I give this person uh, this particular task, I don't think you know, they will deliver. So uh, you know, maybe after giving them a couple of chances, we, we feel that maybe we should look for somebody else. And that's what Jesus said. He said, look, if you're faithful in little things, then much more will be given to you. Now, God gives us a responsibility. It might look like a very small responsibility. But when we do our best in that responsibility, he can trust us more. Okay? We are dependable. So then God decides, okay, come on, let me give them something more. Okay, something more. Something more. Right? So that is the way in which we keep growing as stewards in the kingdom of God. So faithfulness is very important. And wisdom, of course. right? Wisdom in the way we handle things and wisdom in the way we do things. So uh, to understand wisdom, the example which is given here is that of the unjust steward you know, who understands that the master is upset with him and uh, uh, you know the that he might lose his position so what he does is he calls the people who have debts okay different uh, debts uh, he calls all of them and he cancels their debt so the master of this unjust servant actually appreciates the servant and says you know what what you did is not correct but in a sense, you are a wise person because the unjust servant realized that he is going to lose his job soon. So he needed, he needed the uh, friendship of these debtors. So once he cancels their debts, he knows that even if he loses his position, these men or you know, those women, they will be favorable towards him and that he will somehow be able to take his life forward. Okay, so some foresight he has. I know it's a selfish kind of a foresight and yet the master appreciates it for his prudence, for his wisdom. So God is looking for faithfulness. God is looking for wisdom. And faithfulness in little things is what is important in the kingdom of God. And that is what sets us up or qualifies us for bigger things. Now, a good steward is also faithful in handling money. We see that Jesus spoke a lot about money in his uh, sermons. And he talked about how uh, God wants us to handle, like if you cannot handle um, unrighteous mammon, okay, which is the riches of this world, who will give you no, right? Who will give you the true riches? He's talking about the uh, riches of the kingdom of God. So he's, he's 
helping us know that handling money uh you know that is commendable in god's sight and in fact if we handle our resources handle money especially finances properly we are setting ourselves up for god to entrust us with things of the kingdom you know? so handling finances well handling our money well faithfully is a a a, a requisite you know, on the part of a good steward in the kingdom of god so whichever capacity you know we are uh, 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 positioned in handling money is is something that all of us have to do you know and uh, i mean i don't want to i'm trying not to go deep into every every section here because we have quite a lot of portions to complete but you know simple small little things like i can think from my own example you know every time we we uh, uh, plan to organize an event or something right we really think we think oh okay is this expense necessary uh, if it's not necessary okay cancel cut right so you know we try to do things in the most most productive uh, and yet the most economical way and then even after that you know transparency maybe we've done something very simple as we've done, just done a lunch for the um, a, a congregation or for a special occasion but even in that how do we collect the money you know how do we account for the money uh, we try to keep things very transparent okay we collected so much this much was used this is the bill okay and we have you know we have our whatsapp group uh, at our congregation we kind of put it there and we say hey look this is what it is for the charity we collected this much money we bought these these things here's the bill so you know from the smallest things to be accountable handling money well uh, it's not our money it's god's money right so uh, when god sees that then he is able to entrust us with more so handling money is a very very crucial thing uh, for for anyone at any capacity in kingdom work so we must be very careful with that that a good steward is faithful in what is another man's okay so uh, that's also something we see in scripture um so i i just read uh, the verse and it's self explanatory uh, basically it says and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's who will give you what is your own okay so that's what god's word uh, tells us to do to be faithful uh, in what is somebody else's okay and, and that shows how responsible we can be and you know if god uh, has a, a plan for us where we have to kind of head up something or lead uh, a certain ministry then he will make that happen but till such time god connects us with people and generally you know we are serving uh, with another individual we are serving as part of their ministry and if we can't be faithful in what is another man's you know as the scripture here tells us who will give you your own okay so uh, we must not think that you know this is mine this is theirs so when i have my own ministry i'll do well now it's okay it's just you know filler time preparation time <laughs> so it's not like that and every time god is looking for that uh, dependability faithfulness profitability uh you know of the work that has been entrusted to us so with that i'm going to pause any any thoughts questions on character on stewardship uh, on uh, spiritual maturity we we'll go into a time of discussion uh, and then we will you know take a break so yeah uh, this time is open for us to share I hope you all are doing fine. I'm trying to go faster. I hope it's not like a rush. Ah uh, yes, yes, Christopher. Ah uh, yes, Pastor. So I have a question on spiritual maturity. Hmm. Ah. Uh, where um uh, if if uh, you know if we are uh, you know i'm just in, in the uh, sort of you know in the aspect of you know the body the soul and the spirit 
uh, we can uh, you know we can be oppressed um, by the uh, by the evil one mm. in these in these uh, at least in the first dimension i just want to understand uh, is there also a oppression that can happen in, in the in this in the in the in the spirit team mm. um the reason is i actually i, was, I had a cock i was having a discussion with someone last week so mm. that person was saying that you know that spirit being is very uh, uh you know is very in tune with with uh, with god and mm. uh, the devil doesn't have any um, any sort of you know um, right to uh, to enter there uh, so i just wanted to understand uh, you know what is your view on this mm -hmm. okay so you're saying that for one to mature one needs to work on the soul part and not so much the spirit because spirit is perfect is that what you're no no i was, uh, i'm i'm just saying that you know uh, i guess my question is uh, around oppression Mm -hmm. Can it happen in all the three realms, or is it uh, is specifically in, in the in the body and uh, the, the physical and the and the soul? Soul. Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 Sure, uh, Christopher. So I would say the body and the soul only, Christopher, not the spirit. Okay, because the spirit is is um, uh, you know we have become a new creation, and everything. That the changes that need to happen, whatever we talk about in Christ, all that has happened in our spirit, man. Okay, but the work needs to go into the soul and the and the body. So the evil one can oppress us in those two realms, but not in the spirit realm. So in the case of spiritual maturity, uh, immaturity, sorry, sorry, yeah. um, where is this? Um, I mean, how, we we know that you know there's a way, there are ways to you know nourish, nourish the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I guess how is uh, you know spiritual immaturity demonstrated, and, and why is it? Why does it get demonstrated like that? Uh, okay. Is it because the soul is uh, getting in, uh, impacted, or uh... mm -hmm. okay, okay, good, very good question, uh, Christopher. So, see, your first question was about oppression. So, I told you that the spirit man, the spirit man, is free in that sense. And the oppression, usually the strongholds are formed in the mind, and that has to do with the soul, right? Uh, so oppression happens in that realm. Now, you're asking about, this is a separate question. This is about spiritual maturity, okay? So spiritual maturity, yes, there is a growth that needs to take place in the soul, which would be the mind, will, and the emotions, and that is quite easy to understand. Now, in the spirit, if you remember, pastor had done that series on the spiritual man you know the two realms and in that he explains about the growth of the spirit man see the spirit man is sensitive like your like your uh, natural person you know your six senses you we are five senses we have senses and we are alive that is one thing but to develop strength in the and scriptures use the term inner man inner man so can the spirit grow can the spirit mature can the spirit uh, increase its capacity yes there is a process and a progress even for the spirit okay so does that help christopher oh uh, yes so um, uh, i guess we are, we, are, we, are, we would be coming to it or maybe you've already uh, mentioned about how this how this maturity happens and how how does it oh. uh, you know, okay. How does, how does the spirit get nourished? Yes. So, see, we haven't uh, touched on it, like, you know, directly in any way. But whatever we've learned, even through the Bible college, or whatever we have picked up, you know, the word of God builds us up. You said that. So the word of God has the capacity to strengthen the spirit man. And, you know, we read in, uh, uh, it's Jude verse Jude was 20, I think, which says that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, so when we pray in tongues, the capacity of the inner man expands, it increases. So that is another way to strengthen the inner man. So, you know, these are all things. And also when you engage in fasting, right? So uh, these are all way, just a few keys I'm giving you here, but it kind of increases the capacity of your inner man. And also faith growing within us. Right? Everything that causes our faith to grow is actually causing our spirit man to become more and more mature. Yeah, so uh, the word praying, 
right? Yielding ourselves to the Lord in different ways, the fasting, uh, and also obedience to God's word. These are all things that will bring about that maturity. Uh, just as a, you know, like how normally life happens through time, we progress. Similarly, even the spirit man matures when we yield to these things. Great, great question. Thank you, Christopher. That was wonderful. Um, yeah. Uh, any any other questions? I know we are over time, but still, any any other questions? Okay. So uh, let's take a break. Let's uh, go for a ten minute break. Be back at ten o four. And uh, if you have any comments, then we can take it up, and then we move on to the next section. Let's go for a break class. See you soon. Thank you.